The Match Ball. Hello there, and welcome to the show. I'm Dan Moylan, and I'm joined by the usual two. Introduce them in just a second. First of all, I need to do the uh, the important bits, which is uh, Levi Solicitors bring you the match ball. Uh, 10% off your legal fees, um, and uh, that's levisolicitors.co.uk forward slash the square ball. And the bit I need to remember is 15% off conveyancing until the end of September. So if you want to move house, run away from Leeds, and never watch football again, that is the way to do it. I'm uh, joined by Michael Normanton. Hello. And Moscow White's Daniel Chapman. Hello. All right, now I've gathered my thoughts together. Um, I guess the first thing to say is best wishes to Harvey Elliott because um, he's obviously broken his ankle by the looks of it in that game, um, which nobody wants to see. We'll get onto the red card in due course. Second thing I want to say was absolute credit to the fans for staying with the team until the end, despite being what it's quite a difficult day. Mm -hmm. uh, fair to describe it as that. Right, red card. Well, it wasn't. No. I, I, I'm, unless there's a different angle. There which, isn't. Which Bosco says there is, and he's got a little... Telly. Uh, they didn't show anything um, on the little telly. So, no replays, but that, that, there are no other angles. Right. It okay. looked a perfectly good tackle. The referee thought it was a perfectly good tackle until it became clear his leg was knackered. And it looks bad. Like the the one clip I've seen of it, you can very clearly see his, his, leg, his ankle is at the wrong angle for an ankle, mm -hmm. which is a shame for him. But it doesn't mean it was a it doesn't mean it was no. a red card. Injuries happen in contact sports, and that's the truth of the matter, isn't it? It's like, I don't. Obviously, you don't want to see him get that injury at all. He was he was having a really good game. Actually, it was it was they he all kept, were. he kept like just he kept just dropping off our defence and getting the ball and all the ones in the trouble. red shirts were yeah the, the team in the red shirts. Well, let's do the red card in a second then, and more detail because I guess we've got to pick it apart. But um, they were really really good, and that that was annoying uh, in that they were dead good at, at absolutely everything mm -hmm. consistently, mm -hmm. and it was a golfing class. I think is it fair to say? Would you agree with that? Yeah. Um, where exactly it went wrong, I don't know. Um, I thought Furpo had he improved as the game went on, but <laughs> early on I thought he was getting absolutely destroyed by Salah. Uh, the midfield again, it was the normal problem. Uh, Calvin, what, Calvin what, was what midfield? Well, Calvin was brilliant throughout. It's worth saying that first of all, he was by far our best player. He was actually one of the best players on the pitch, which, given he was on our team, was quite an achievement because you know we didn't have an awful lot of the game. But what do we do with Rodrigo? Like, it, it, it needs to end. That experiment needs to, I'm sorry to say it. We all know we're not stupid. Bielsa's not stupid. But we've got to justify having a, a 27, 29 million pound player in the team. We can't justify not playing him because we're not in a position to do that, are we? How many times can you be taken off at half time before you have to concede that maybe it's best to just not be there in the first place? And I, and I know that maybe the option is Tyler Roberts and I'm not. I'll hand over to Moscow, the, the main Tyler Roberts super fan. I'm not even a massive Tyler Roberts fan, but we are much better with him on mm. as opposed to Rodrigo. And that is unfortunate given how much money we've spent on him. Mm. I um, I think today was living proof of just the marginal difference in everything that means we are where we are and they are where they are in, in terms of, I don't know, it's stuff like the decision-making, the speed of thought, the accuracy of the passing, just everything that we did today just went a little bit astray, whereas everything they did today, it just seemed like it was planned from minute one, whereas at times we didn't look like we knew quite what we were doing. And I guess that's to their credit that they forced us into looking like that. But that gap in midfield, I mean, was terrifying. I mean, we know we give up a lot of the midfield anyway, but it feels a little bit like, to me, people have just worked out what to do there. And because we are marginally inferior... We're not marginally inferior. We're loads inferior, but they are the recent European champions and the recent Premier League yeah, champions. It's not fair. No, it isn't fair. It's not our fault. It's the Premier League's <laughs> fault, and it's their fault. And I always feel like when you're talking about Rodrigo being a £27 million player or £29 million player and he, he has to produce for us, there is that pressure on us. Whereas how many, how many £27 million players have Liverpool got? That seems like that's probably a baseline did they pay that for oxlade chamberlain just to sit on the bench and get an injury I know, but what you're going to do is you're going to sit here now and tell me this is the way that the premier league is and we just mm. got to suck it up and it but it's shit it's and it makes it not enjoyable and it makes well, you well, walk out of out of a football game feeling massively subdued because you just you've got no chance have you against against the system as it stands at the minute i think i think some midfielders would help though yes even if it, i mean i don't know adam Forshaw was but i think the thing with with rodrigo is he's 
occasionally quite good in transitions when we're attacking and stuff. But in a game like that one, where you're pretty much under the cosh, having someone who's willing to just hold the ball in midfield for a little bit, like I'm talking five, ten seconds, it, it does help. And mm-hmm. like just trying to trying to attack really quickly, and then you're just getting the ball taken off you really quickly, and then they've got. Salah Romane and, and Jota who they can play it to. In the build-up to this, I think it was Bielsa did identify that we, it's when we we lose the ball in attacking transitions that we put ourselves under pressure and the number of times in that first half that you saw it and, and you know, Rodrigo wasn't the only one but he was massively obvious as being a guilty party. There were moments when he looked really good and he did some really good stuff but what I'm talking about, the marginal stuff, Moscow, I mean like um, Rodrigo just being half a second too slow yet still having good ideas or just turning the wrong way in a situation just those little tiny decisions that you know add up and, and make one big massive golfing class it mm. just it just feels like that's, that's what we saw today why they won the champions league yeah and we didn't we were in the championship while they were doing that from memory and rodrigo yeah i think the best thing he did was um the cross that Ailing tried to Huddersfield in, but it went off his knee and in the south stand. But then the the question that arose then was like, well, why is Rodrigo by the left hand corner flag? So it was all quite strange. But the thing about today is I don't really feel like there was any marginal gains because apart from or marginal differences because apart from Calvin Phillips and probably Melier, they were all crap. Like none of our players played as well as they can do. And how much of that is to do with them being off it? And how much of that is to do with um, Liverpool's level, we'll probably find out against Newcastle mm. rather yeah. than today. And that's the, the sad thing, though, isn't it? It's piled more pressure on Newcastle for one thing, which is something Phil Hay keeps saying to me. He's saying, like, if we don't get anything out of Liverpool, suddenly that looks massive, doesn't it? And, I, I mean, Newcastle as well is going to be a lot harder with without any central defenders as well. Yes. Because Urente went off with a hamstring injury. They tend to be not particularly short injuries you, you're normally talking about three or four weeks as a minimum aren't <laughs> four shots injured as well <laughs> so then we've got strike will presumably be suspended cock is still not fit enough to be on the bench today so you'd think it's unlikely he'll be fit so we've got cresswell and cooper cooper and ailing yeah and then shackleton right back mm. so it's not actually that bad i mean it depends how you feel about how liam cooper played to get today as to how bad you think it is um, um <laughs> but you know so that's what will happen it won't we won't be down to charlie creswell um being thrown in although play him against newcastle because newcastle are crap so i think we'll be all right mm. yeah i'll cooper. play against newcastle cooper was um cooperish wasn't he? yes yeah. uh, his yellow card those um i wrote down that it was the the, the most cooperist booking mm. um, it was the you same can think of yeah. it was basically the same thing he gave away a penalty um, against Everton for wasn't it so yeah. the player just gets the wrong side and he just instinctively has a little grab at him he and I think a it's a better idea does he and I think it's the same thing he gave away a penalty for in that Derby playoff game as yes, well it isn't is, it yeah, just yeah, someone yeah. gets the wrong side and he just, so pulls, he tugs, yeah. just pulls like just under the armpit just we gives him make a little him, uh, make him play in mittens <laughs> and that would cut this out um, chop off his fingers I actually had a uh, and I followed your advice I don't normally often listen to you mm. but this was an occasion I saw the opportunity to profit out of Leeds United's uh, misery and shame I had a half-time bet on a red card at oh, something like 14 um, in the old uh, decimal odds. So I don't know what that would be as a fraction, but... 13 to 1. There you go. Um, I hadn't counted on it being no, strike. No, you, you assumed it was Liam Cooper. I'd assumed it would be Liam Cooper was yeah. going to go because he was very close to one. Um, and we can, you know, we, we can be depressed about how Leeds played. I think it might be more fruitful to be annoyed about Liverpool and the referee, the scouser in the black, because... The I thought Liam Cooper was going to be sent off when the referee didn't give um, a free kick for their handball when the Liverpool player handballed it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then Liam Cooper committed a foul on the edge of the penalty area, which it was close. And even though he didn't get um, a second yellow for that, that was the moment. It was the thought, lunge, right, wasn't it? The lunge well, was there. It was the moment I thought, right, he's, he's down to his very last chance now. Um, but then in, at the end, Jordan Henderson was having a right go at the referee because the referee gave handball against him for doing exactly what had happened in the first half when the referee said, no, that was absolutely fine. So there is the gravest injustice of the day. Um, I'm convinced, apart from what happened to Pascal Stroik, perhaps. But um, emblematic, I think, of a referee that didn't really 
know what he was doing or having. It, he it didn't feel like he had, he had, I was going to say a control. Yeah. There's no control, as Steve Nichols said. It didn't feel to me like he was controlling it. He, it felt to me like he was refereeing the occasion a little bit. Yeah. And he, and you, you, everyone thinks the referees are against them, but it felt like they were getting the sway of most of the decisions today. Which, which isn't to say it made any difference. No, no, no well, of course not. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think it's very important about... to stress that we're not blaming the referee for us losing because they, no, but we're they, to, uh... they Mane should have scored about eight goals. Yeah. Yeah. That's the one good thing Luke Ayling probably... Um, after Calvin Phillips was our best player just for blocking Mane sheer persistence again <laughs> and again but um, what struck me about the not giving that handball was that it was in the middle of the pitch it wouldn't have mattered it would just be a free kick and it was such a nothing free kick to give that I didn't understand why he didn't bother giving it if it had been you know in the penalty area something contentious that would lead to a goal scoring opportunity something like that you could think the referee might go oh no this is really difficult I don't know what to do in this situation do I give it do I not Whereas just somebody controls a ball with a hand in, near the centre circle, I know you just mean. blow your whistle and give a free kick and then everybody's happy. Because it did lead to a chance for them. And I know we're now splitting and it hairs. And then a yeah. foul by us and it yeah. then pushes Liam Cooper closer, closer to the precipice. Yeah. And uh, um, and I thought I was going to win some money off it. But, but regards all, to Cooper... All's well that ends well. I also had the same thought. I shared that thought with you. I, th- I thought he was likely to walk today because he got turned early, didn't he? And that's what I mean. Again, going back to the marginal thing about just not having that little bit of quality to realise when you're going to get turned by canny players. And, you know, Mane and uh, Salah both know how to win those fouls. And in fairness, so. We've seen Cooper fall for it with some right bombs in the championship as <laughs> yeah. well, in fairness. It's, you don't need to be, even be that clever to do it sometimes. Which I know it feels like... We- it does feel like we're being maybe harsh on Cooper because no, it was crap today. But it, it was, it was, it was it changes today. overall contribution that he is the the title winning captain who helped mm. us um, end sixteen years of misery. But I can't, I can't help on a day like today. They'll feel like we've seen his limit. That's the thing, and it, and his and that's that's no disrespect to him. Mm. You know, it's all like you said. He doesn't take away all the stuff he's achieved so far, but he worries me. And you know, the gap that we're trying to close, which was in full evidence there today. It's terrifying because yeah. he's going to do that time and time again. Well, he's going to do it time, well, time and time again against Liverpool's attackers. And I feel like if that's his limit, that's fine. Like I would be very happy if my limit as a defender was Mo Salah because he's brilliant. Yeah, like that's fine. You, oh no, I I came up against Maradona and I couldn't deal with him. Um, it doesn't mean you're terrible. It just means you're up against um, world class players. And they make it really difficult for you to defend against them. And mm. the, as I said, the test is more if um, who plays up for Newcastle, Andy Carroll, is getting the best of uh, Liam Cooper on Friday night, then, you, then you're seeing his level is below where it should be. But if his level is not quite being able to deal with Mo Salah. It's not just that, though, but like the second goal. Like I, I, said, I said to my dad, I said, look, at 35 minutes, we just need to get to half time here at 1 0, and hopefully they'll sort it out at half time. That was my hope because we were getting completely mullered in that, in that first half. And then obviously they came out and scored immediately at the start of the second half, which, which put the game to bed, didn't it? But it was Cooper's match. Cooper lost Van Dyke again in the area and um, he headed it down and it ended up, you know, falling to it was it Fabinho or whatever. I mean, Van Dyke had a really, really good opportunity in the first half where yep. I think it was Cooper again had lost him and he, he was a completely free header which he, I mean, Van Dijk, he, was, he was going wide actually yeah, Van Dijk is a mountain and he's a brilliant defender and he's a, he's a potent attacker mm. but there's just no excuse for losing your man as easy as they do yeah. then, the, 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 block, the actual goal I've no idea what really happened the was... Bamford's block is weak Yeah, so it ends up giving two chances to whichever Scouse player um, noted Scouser Fabinho noted Scouser yeah <laughs> scored it yeah it's kind of it's dropping and um, maybe you kind of maybe want to swap those situations round because I can imagine if Cooper had been there he would have charged at that ball and cleared it out and probably given away a penalty I don't know but Bamford being an attacker is not full blooded into the clearance and so it kind of hits him and then goes back to um, who is this person that scored Fabinho was him it? Yep. Uh, and then he, he sticks it in the net while Mane is offside Mm. I mean that didn't matter in the end, but I am desperate to cling to just something. Um, well, there's lots of things. I mean, the, the, I, there wasn't lots of things. My main takeaway from today, apart from because I'm kind of three nil to the the European champions of recent years, seems about right. I, I can't really object to to that in our uh, second season in the the Premier League, and given the comparative levels of investment, um, so. The um, Jurgen Klopp's behaviour ends up being the thing that came out of that that is dominating my thoughts around the 
the red card because him, I don't know how much of it came across on TV or how much was visible in the other parts of the ground, but he was basically offering out all the Leeds fans behind the bench um, while the medics were still running to Harvey Elliott on the pitch because because he seems to think um, nobody can dare do anything. Somebody suggesting uh, he, was sc- he was screaming. Yeah, well, to because this is the thing I'm thinking about. I'm bored of dissecting Liam Cooper. Um, the tackle happens and it's a clean tackle, but then I noticed it seemed like Stroik's other leg had been left behind and it, it hurt Elliot. And then they didn't wait for the referee to stop the game. Physio started running straight on. Klopp started running straight on. And my first thought when I saw that was, you're not allowed to do that. The game's going on. You can't all just come running on the pitch. And I think all the fans behind the dugout started saying, you can't do that loudly, forcefully. Um, and then it very quickly quickly became clear because you think, well, why are they all running on the pitch? Oh, this must be pretty serious. And then it started to sort of spread through the West End. Where, so we're quite close to, to it. Spread through like, oh, something's maybe gone off here. And then there's that confusion because yeah. at one side there's a game going on. Yeah, we all kind of went, oh, what are you stopping it for? And then we realised. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And so it's understandable from every everybody's point of view that because it's a serious injury, they've gone on straight to do it. But because the fans behind in the stands don't know, have a close up view of what's happening, they're all just confused. Why is this running on the pitch? But it easily gets sorted out. It is, once it's clear that Harvey Elliott's ankle is all over the place, it cools down, but it doesn't cool down when you've got Jurgen Klopp running backwards and forwards. He kept sort of running towards the player and then running back to the to the fans, screaming, shouting at them, jumping at them, um, yelling at them. And this is while there's still people running to help Harvey Elliott. And I think that's not the moment. I don't know what is going through his mind where he thinks what I really need to do in this situation is have a go at every, all the fans in the West Stand for a natural reaction to seeing a game interrupted. And it didn't help to calm anybody down. Nobody at that point is then, oh, right, it's obviously a serious injury. We'll, we'll let the, the medics take their, their course. They're all having a go at Jurgen Klopp and wanting to fight him. And it's absolutely ridiculous. And then I don't know, all I could see on my little telly, because they weren't showing any replays of the thing, is even after Pascal Stroik was sent off, Klopp is in the ear of the fourth official going on and on and on and on. And I don't even... I can't even begin to imagine what it's about. Did he want the fans sending off as well because they didn't react the way he wanted? Did he want more Leeds players sent off? Does he want, I don't know, do we have to stop the game until they put Harvey Elliott back together again and we we play properly? I just don't understand what more he wants in a situation where the medics have been allowed on immediately to help him and he couldn't have been brought any more help any more quickly. And then the player who didn't do, even do anything wrong, there wasn't a foul given, has been sent off. What else is left to do to make Jurgen Klopp satisfied in this situation? And it's just, he used to be, I'm sure he used to be nice. I'm sure like when he first, his first season at Liverpool, he might have dealt with this in a kind of a, a calmer way. I don't know what Liverpool have done to him. But that, then the rest of the, uh, I'd rather be having a go at Jurgen Klopp um, in the aftermath of the terrible injury to Harvey Elliott, from which I hope he makes a full recovery, than, um, you know, criticising Rafinha for sitting down after their third goal like a big sulky twat, which well, he did. Well, we have arrived back at the uh, at the red card, so um, let's talk about that again. And consensus, generally, I mean, I'm, I am plucking people quoting, um, like, various pundits or whatever, suggesting that... Um, it, it wasn't. It was just unlucky. It wasn't even a foul, let alone a red card. And do, do you agree with that? Look, like compared to the Liam Cooper one at City, the one that wanted the the Man City fans wanted to be sick in a bin over. <laughs> like that one, he was he was off the ground and stuff. And I think he was kind of unlucky that this makes it sound like this is proper victim blaming. It's unlucky for Liam Cooper that that man's leg was there when Strike. he went when he did that thing. Oh, no, I mean, in the, yeah, the Man City one. City, yes. Whereas this I'll one, I I just don't think there's any any intent or danger he's not out of control i wouldn't say he's not both feet aren't off the ground he's quite he's at the side of him when he when he kind of slides in and hooks the ball out i i just i just think it's unlucky i, I can't see it any other way and obviously if it happens to one of your really good young players you're really upset about it mm. and that's fine as well you can i can see that it was obvious from Mo Salah's reaction instantly that it was pretty grim what had happened to him yeah he was holding like his head in his hands when he walked away that kind of you realize it's serious but 
I just it's just an accident. It's mm-hmm. all it's all I can see it as. I don't think I wouldn't ever want Pascal Stroik to not do that again because mm-hmm. I, ju- I just don't think it's a foul. And mm-hmm. I think in a physical game where you have to, you know, it is a load of like ten to fourteen stone men throwing themselves around at each other. Occasionally, stuff like this probably does happen. Mm-hmm. And, it, yeah. and, it, and it's it, it's that directive that they're allowing a bit more physical contact as well. That it's kind of it's going it's running counter to that, isn't it? I don't well. think it was a foul last season either. I don't think it's ever a foul, and the referee didn't blow for one. It was just so. Why was, was he tack- sent off then? Well, there's been the the Premier League have reported to the um, Athletic, haven't they? They've said it's for the intensity and endangerment. I think are the quotes. I'll have to find it exactly. So I'm not. God forbid I misrepresent the views of the Premier League. Um, but they, you know, Isn't this is a good thing in the Premier League. This is the kind of thing that they might um, sue over. Yeah, the Premier League have clarified to uh, Amatai Winehouse of the Athletic that strike was sent off due to the intensity and endangerment of Elliot, um, which is nonsense, mm. really. I mean, I'm not, I'm not even sure if those are words that are in the rules, um, and it wasn't. Uh, yes, we're going to have to spend a long time trying to work out what that what, what does it mean yeah, yeah. I, it's it's just word soup isn't it the intensity yeah, it, and endangerment i mean did he set out to endanger him no did he actually endanger him no as his trading leg caught him i'm not sure i've seen the replay and i instantly thought that's not a that's mm. not a red card and it might actually not be that bad an injury the um the full report so um the athletic have more info it's uh it seems to be now being characterized as a uh a dislocated ankle. Jurgen Klopp says it's a bad injury. Ankle. I heard it was dislocated. We could put it back. He is in the hospital. Elliot has already posted on Instagram before the match had finished, saying thank you for the messages, guys. Road to recovery. I mean, I wouldn't like a dislocated ankle. I think that hurts. But I think I remember that. Um, do you remember that video of a, a footballer? She, uh, it's a female footballer, and she punches her knee back in after it dislocates because it, she's uh, gone uh, what's it lethal weapon the film I think isn't it's, it uh, Riggs I bang. think it's a regular injury for her and so sometimes her knee just pops out so she punches it back in and carries on going so it's not as bad as for example tibia fibia which is what it looked like yeah I these... thought it was dangling off yeah so he, he'll need some treatment and then um... it depends how badly like how badly damaged the tendons and yeah there's like that, ligaments it? can it's... be so yeah. um, but that's a little bit less than the worst case scenario which um, I know I'm, I'm annoyed about Klopp's reaction and stuff, but I would also say that like the next twenty minutes, you have that feeling when you've—I can't remember if I've been in a stadium when there's been like a serious injury like that, and it's not a pleasant feeling when after he's gone on, and you're thinking, "Oh God, that was pretty horrible to mm. see all that going on." And I would have more sympathy if Jurgen Klopp hadn't been jumping around like a fucking fool in, yeah. in the midst of it all. The Athletic understands that Stroik's tackle was deemed a serious foul play due to the intensity of the challenge and the endangerment to Elliot, hence the straight red card. Um, the first official, uh, Craig Paulson, made the decision on field with the assistance of the fourth official, who was close to the uh, incident, and it was confirmed after consultation with VAR. And I would say... Um, is it, sorry, is the, is the fourth official allowed to do that? I'm not... I'm not I'm, and I ask that with, you know, with pure intention. I just genuinely don't know. I think so. Okay. I mean, it's, I would say that's... Fair. I don't agree with the outcome, but I think that's fair enough thing to do if the fourth official is standing right yeah, there makes, when it happens. Yeah, the, yeah. the referee's going, no, no, I refuse to take your... So, But what I'm saying is that if the ref hasn't seen it or has deemed it all right, that's the point of VAR, isn't it? You don't... Mm. You, you're talking about another subjective opinion there. The point of VAR is it's the record of what happened. That's a subjective opinion as well. Though, no, but if, if they said, come and look at it on the screen, and then at least the referee can... That's the point of it, isn't it, to go and verify... They did consult VAR, though, so I think they've said to... You know, they've sent the message up going, right. are we right? And they've gone, yeah, you don't need to look at it. It's kind of Because it's horrible. Don't look at it. <laughs> yeah. His ankle's all over. Because a lot of the time they seem to give red cards on intent, don't they? Like if someone's gone over the top of the ball and not made any contact, they say, well, it was, it's still a red card because it's it was a reckless tackle or whatever. But the, so it's, are you refereeing outcome or are you, are you refereeing intent? Because It's outcome in this case, isn't it? Exactly. It's like it's, it can be either or, it seems. Not which, our which words. doesn't quite seem fair. The words of Gary Neville, who is one pundit that I saw being... Uh, tweet during the game when I was trying to find out because I missed the red card so I was trying to work out what actually happened um, said he'd been sent off for the injury and not for the tackle right and I think that that was Neville's opinion and um, on this occasion I would say that Gary Neville is correct uh, and Calvin Phillips' uh, team have tweeted out from Cal- Calvin Phillips' account saying get well soon mate stay strong so sounds like the players are all um, 
offering each other best wishes. And like you said, we, we don't, don't, we don't like offering best wishes because you yeah, don't want somebody's we, no, we don't want to leg all over the place. You want to see him playing football and losing to Leeds United. That would be the the perfect outcome of the day. And there is also the, the fact that it kind of overshadows. Bielsa has been asked and talked about it at, at length, and it's kind of. Um, Today was a really bad day for Leeds United because we were, were no good. Um, Urente is injured again, which is unhelpful because I thought in the half hour he was playing, he was really good. Cooper um, wasn't good, and I was about to say was sent off, but he wasn't. It's just my <laughs> mind thinks he was. Stroik was sent off. Um, so all those things are, are bad things to have happened to Leeds United, but obviously it's nothing compared to what Jurgen Klopp will be going through right now when actually he just oh he's dislocated ankle I'm not bothered yeah. after mm. he's trying to offer out the West Stand strange they're old people in that stand <laughs> it was strange it had a strange effect on the game um, from the moment of the injury because it was, it was over as a contest anyway wasn't it we, we pretty much know that we actually ended up having more opportunities when we had 10 men albeit at the cost of looking completely porous at the back it, it added a strange I don't know it added a strange dimension to the game they could have scored about another five after the after the red card but it made us look more threatening going forward weirdly yeah I mean, we still didn't create a great deal I mean the, the closest we came was that Bamford shot for about 40 yards wasn't it where he which was going in which was a very good a very good effort actually I thought Allison was going to get to that quite easily but he, at the end he was um he was right a last ditch palm over the bar wasn't it so but I mean we did we didn't we never created any, did we create any really good chances? Yeah, Rodrigo in the first half. But no, I mean, no, I mean, I mean, I mean in different. that, I mean, in that period though, where um, after the red, I can't remember if it was before or after the red, but Roberts had one just like Rodrigo, where they both needed to go either side of Allison. Um, Roberts did, but he also went round the post. He did his usual. Mm. I'm going to place this, and it will be beautiful. Five yards wide. Yes. <laughs> um, and then Rodrigo was like, "I'm going to smack this, and it will be beautiful." Straight at his head. Mm. Um, I think in the first half there was something in the game for us in the first half which did involve leaving a lot at the back for them but my feeling before they scored and maybe going right up to half time anyway was that this game was really exciting there was too much Liverpool but we kept coming into it and battering them for maybe like five minutes and then it would be back at our end again and we would um, some of the times well they're so dangerous when we're attacking because I mean transition is a popular word these days um, among the football geeks but I'm now starting to understand what they mean when they talk about transition it's because counter attack yeah every time we it broke down when we were in attack the speed at which they got it up to the other end and they, they were actually doing some fairly industrial stuff in terms of get it in that space in midfield and just drop it over our full backs mm. both bring sides your, uh, bring your central defenders up with the ball as well because then Carry they have an overload space, yeah. and we have uh, people are trying to mark and um, the first goal everybody kind of gets lost Furpo doesn't notice that Alexander Arnold or maybe does notice and doesn't care but Alexander Arnold is unmarked over on the wing Urente is kind of in between um, nobody and nothing and then kind of gets realizes he should be on Salah, but Salah's already ahead of him, and that's when just pulling Alexander out of shape. Arnold is, yeah. Uh, um, yeah. And I think that I would look from looking at the replay. Furpo was quite slow at getting back after Alexander Arnold once he'd gone round him. You're looking at him saying, "Oh, chase him then." Um, he worries me. Well, Barcelona's an easy team to play for because you just give it to Messi, and mm. then and he didn't play for them very often. I think the. Um, the, the gamble um, with Furpo and I say that in the sense that every time you sign a player it's a gamble but the the way the odds are with him is he was really good at Real Betis and then he's kind of had some nonsense time at Barcelona and if they get him back to the player he was then with all the new stuff that Leeds will give unto him he'll be brilliant Um what are we four games into the season? It's not happening yet. He, he just looks like. I mean, the note I've made is that he looks every inch like a player who's only just met the rest of them. That's yeah. still how he looks. And Dan James yeah. had the same. Hey, we, we saw on. Dan James. Woo. <laughs> yeah, fucking rubbish, wasn't he? <laughs> no, he was, but I think the same applied to him. There was points where, um, he was between two Liverpool players and looking with, for somebody to tell him which one to mark. Which natural when he's he only turned up from Welsh duty two days ago didn't he so it's not surprising he don't know what he's doing mm, but I, thought, I thought James was he was fine wasn't he when he came on I thought actually 
Harrison was a bit unlucky to be taken off because I thought he was playing. He was better than Rafinha, I thought today. But mm, I guess yeah. Rafinha has a bit more. He's got threat about him, hasn't he? Yeah, he, but, he, but we got we got sulky Rafinha, didn't he we? He was yeah, sulking yeah. today. There were a couple of times when he was caught offside and stuff as well because he couldn't be asked running back. And there was one where um, where they were breaking and he should have just followed Mo Salah, but instead he just sort of went uh, losing yeah. anyway. And yeah. that was that was annoying. And thought. the third goal was he just stayed sitting down for ages until the ball was basically back on the centre spot. Both teams are in their respective halves. And he's like, oh, I guess I'll play the rest of the match. Then. Fine. <laughs> um, Little flounce. And he can do that because we know his his personality from the stories are wrong when he's all about winning at all costs and he hates losing and that's fine. But then when he had a, a chance then to, in injury time, to put a, a cross in towards Bamford, I think it was rubbish. So you can't have it both ways. It's kind of... I will indulge players doing things badly. My supportive Tyler Roberts is a absolute <laughs> um, test case for that, but not with the the other side of it. You can't throw a massive attention seeking sulk and then also not be the best player on the pitch. Basically, you, it's there's, it can't work like that. Unfortunately, I mean, he still he put the work in, and that's one of the important things as well. He's still putting the work in even at the end, you know. Yeah. Um, when to we an were, extent when we were getting absolutely when we were hammered but. but Jackie I would yeah I would agree our best moments in fact in the second half came when we were switching to Jackie Harrison and that first touch is obviously beautiful there was one probably maybe the best bit of the game for us when um, he beautiful first touch beats his man into the box Stuart Dallas mm-hmm. kind of went behind a pillar but I got the impression that he did like a full um, Diego Maradona turn into some kind of Zidane move came out of it like Messi um, and that was then, I think, what led to Tyler Roberts' shot going wide from memory. That bit was good. And best best I, move of the game. The frustration with um, with Jackie was that he didn't keep taking Trent Alexander-Arnold on because in the first half, he dribbled round him brilliantly and almost set up a chance for Junior Furpo. So we did have some good openings in the first half and they came when Jackie took his man on, but then he spent so much time looking inside and trying to cross to uh, Rafinha, trying to find him on the other wing. And I don't know if Bielsa has said that the the way he set leads up didn't help our attackers to shine. And I, I wonder what the instructions were and whether they were different because Melier not releasing the ball quickly was another feature, didn't. Um, he looked frustrated by that, though, quite often because there was never an outlet. Well, there was one, but he saw uh, Rafinha towards the end of the game and this is two grumpy people then but Rafinha starts running after a, a Liverpool corner Melier's caught it and Melier sees him is about to go and then goes no and Rafinha keeps running he's like well do it now do it yeah, now yeah, yeah, and yeah. he ends up almost in their penalty area and then Melier's just Luke <laughs> Le Ballon I'm just um, just looking at the stats we'll wrap it up in a second but I'm just looking at the stats so UFC data have posted uh, 56% possession to Liverpool shots 9 versus 30 Nine on target, four uh, for us, five big chances. There were um, there was a twenty four chances versus seven, and this is the big one. Final third passes, we did fifty five. They did one hundred and six. There was a point in the first half where it felt like they had a, a five or six minute spell there, where they basically created a chance every single minute, and mm. it was really hard to watch. I was just like begging for half time at that point. I was thinking, how how on earth are they not further in the lead here? Yeah, the number of red shirts in our penalty area at some points towards the end of the first half. And there is some credit to be had for Leeds because the blocks, Ailing in particular, but Cooper even did get some good blocks in um, to keep them out when we were under that much pressure. Maybe, in fact, I'm I'm turning credit into even more frustration. We could keep them out when we were under that much pressure when there's about 20 Liverpool players in our box. And then the first goal, we just get turned by Trent Alexander-Arnold on the wing, who you should know about. And the second goal is just shit defending at a corner. So it's kind of all that effort put into stopping Sadio Mane from scoring and um, getting block after block and tackle after tackle in at the very last ditch. And then you toss it off for two shit goals, which is a disappointing one. And then the third one didn't count. Mm. Well, go on then, let's wrap it up. What do you have to say about that overall? Shite. Mm. Moscow. <laughs> let's beat Newcastle. I think we need to, don't you? Well, I mean, need. Yeah. yeah. It'd be nice. I'd, pr- I'd we need much points. prefer it. We when, need points. Uh, we do, yeah. And it, I always prefer it when Leeds United win um, games. But uh, 
Yeah, let's win. I mean, I thought we'd lose today. It was you two mm. being bloody positive. Well, I, 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 I thought we'd lose. I just hoped we'd win. <laughs> That's the difference. I can accept that we might not win against really good sides, and that is frustrating, but sort of also okay mm. sometimes. I just, I think. There are underlying concerns though after today, but in it's terms the, it's of the midfield, we we don't have a midfield. Yeah, that is a and it's like it's glaringly obvious. To, and I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot, and I can see it. Yeah. So I mean, at the moment, Tyler Roberts seems to be the answer, and the old, what is the question? Um, if Tyler Roberts is the answer, I just thing. I, just how much more solid did we look in the second like in the second half of last season when we had actual um, midfielders in there? You know, when we let's say had Dallas, Click, Phillips, we the top. Um, at two from three or whatever. Just... I don't know where Dallas has to play on um, against Newcastle. He might end up at right back. Oh, Potentially, no, or Shackleton, Shackleton will be there. Ailing will be central defence. It'll be Dallas in midfield, Firpo left back. will keep playing there until he gets good. Um, maybe Click will come in instead of Rodrigo, mm. or you just keep, um, you just keep take him off at trying half-time. with Rodrigo and take him off at half time. Or you start with Tyler Roberts and say, well, let's see. You know, mm. I think Tyler Roberts. I mean, I don't want to talk about Tyler Roberts because every we always do. I don't think he's said he's made any game worse so far this season nope. when he's come on. So why not start him in a game and see, see if happens. he can yeah. uh, justify that contract? And um, and that's one of the that's kind of one of the things about the season to come is, um, you know, we're not winning the league. This is probably news uh, and not news, but. Um, the extent to which the the team that starts the season will be the team that ends the season because will Tyler Roberts take Rodrigo's place? Will Shackleton take Ailing's place? Will Charlie Creswell take over from Liam Cooper? Are Gail Hart and Greenwood going to come into the team? Somerville is quite clearly uh, second choice. He's, he's, for, he's one of the subs for wing changes. So we're going to see him this season. So there will be changes um just you know for sure and his muscle injuries are going to uh, mean that some places just have to stay the same we shall see well thanks for uh, for joining us on this one we'll see you in a bit the match ball